Peggy Jean Smythe sat in her office reading an email a viewer had sent her. Because of her high-profile time slots as a television host, she received dozens of emails each day. She normally responded with a standard forwarded thank you letter, but if an email was particularly flattering, she would sometimes respond personally with one or two lines. The reason viewers loved Peggy Jean was because they could relate to her. She often spoke of her three boys, four if you count my hobby. She was a working mom and a good Christian woman who often hosted Jewelry of Faith programs, which featured crucifix cufflinks and Star of David money clips, both of which she presented with equal pride. She was attractive, blonde hair worn in a short but full style, blue eyes, fair skin. Her roundish face seemed approachable and trustworthy. She was highly polished, yet friendly and accessible. Peggy Jean knew all of this to be true, because she had seen the consumer research. In fact, she had personally attended many of the focus groups. Peggy Jean, did you hear? About Max, I mean, Amanda asked, standing in Peggy Jean's doorway. Peggy Jean turned dramatically in her chair to face the young woman, of course, I heard, and I think it's exactly the right thing to do. You don't think it's a little too severe? I mean, just dropping him like that? Asked the associate producer. Peggy Jean smiled the exact smile she often wore for viewers while hosting a vacuum cleaner showcase or one of the monthly Easy Wear 18K Gold specials. She touched the lapel of her jacket. Well, of course, I'm sorry for Max, as I would be for any human being facing an adverse situation. But when God closes a door, Amanda, he opens a window. Peggy Jean looked up at the suspended ceiling. He must have other plans in store for our Max. Then the smile was gone. And now, Amanda, if you don't mind, I have an awful lot to do. Amanda shrugged. Sure, I understand. I didn't mean to disturb you. Peggy Jean returned her attention to the computer screen, listening to make sure Amanda actually had left. Then, almost biting the tip of her manicure, but stopping herself, Peggy Jean read the alarming email for the third time. To PG underscore Smythe at Cellivision.com. From Zoe at ProviderNet.com. Subject, hi there. Hi, Peggy Jean. How exciting to be able to write to you. I am a loyal television fan and have ordered everything from crock pots to jewelry. I'm so pleased with the quality of the countless items I have purchased from television. Peggy Jean, my ears always perk up when I hear your voice on television. You are my favorite host. You are so professional and friendly, and I just love your hair. Speaking of hair... I just wanted to tell you this woman to woman. Peggy Jean, I have noticed many times in close-up pictures how very hairy your earlobes are. When I first noticed, it was a bit of a shock to see a beautiful earring on your ear surrounded by all those hairs, which on my large screen TV were each almost the size of a Vienna sausage. I wonder if you have considered using the Lady Songbird waxing hair removal system that I've seen on television. It seems a painless, quick, and easy way for you to be even more beautiful than you already are. I bumped into, really, my friend Susan at the supermarket, and we got to talking, you know, just catch up stuff. Anyway, I mentioned television for some reason, I forget why, and before long, we were talking about the show and our favorite hosts, and she said the very same thing I'm telling you now. Isn't that a hoot? LOL. She said, she's a very hairy lady. We both had a good chuckle out of it, but please understand it wasn't a chuckle at you personally. Well, I've talked on and on, so I'll stop here. May God bless you and your family, and you have my very best wishes. Your friend, Zoe. Smile.